So this is a photograph I took um, a couple of years ago now in Sutton Park. It's a very simple composition. I like the, the path sort of winding off into the distance. You've got the sort of far bank of line of trees and this foreground tree here on the uh, left hand side. So I'll see what I can do with this one. So I'll just have a quick whiz through the materials first. Starting with the palette. I always have them in the same order, so I know exactly where they are then, because I'm going to go looking for them. Mind you, there's only seven, so you've got ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, and light red. So that's the palette. And then over here we've got the three brushes. We've got a large hake brush, a number three rigger, and a three quarter inch flat. I've got um for scraping I either use a just a piece of plastic card or this um pallet knife just for scraping out or it might be boats or bits of grasses or whatever. Colours I use Cotman watercolour tubes. They're fairly cheap but I find they do the job for me, no problem. I've got a water jar with a nice lip on it, which takes the excess water off the hake. What water is left, I uh, wipe on the um, tea towel that's drying up there. I mean, a nice dry brush then. Tissue, if I want to dab out some clouds or anything like that. The paper, it's £130 Fabriano, 15 by 11 which I use these clips and fix it to this piece of plywood, 9mm thick, so it's nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. So, another quick look at the photograph. And then uh, I'll get cracking. So I'm going to start using the large hake. And just putting clear water all over the paper, giving it a good soaking more water and then that way the paper will stretch evenly and I can get a nice sort of soft coloured soft sky with no hard edges so the first colour I'm going to go into is raw sienna a bit more on the brush just set that all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to clean the brush and I'm going to go Ultramarine and then just coming from this right hand side and then just sort of I'm sort of twisting the brushes I come like sideways on and then like that just to get some sort of random random sort of colours going on in the sky not random colours random strokes and bring it like all the way down to the bottom and then the sky is just blue but I might try and make it slightly more interesting by putting a little few clouds in there. Lizarin crimson, raw sienna and uh, it's very very light. It goes a bit bigger and then as I get down to the horizon which is going to be about there they obviously get smaller, narrower and narrower, a bit bigger up there. I'll do it for that. Just watching that colour, the uh, some of the blue was just um, just working its way down the paper. Then just don't want I don't want it sort of coming down like that. So when I can see it coming down, I'm just very lightly just flicking across just to grab the uh, grab the water. You probably want to do that with a clean brush, otherwise you're going to have the uh, colour all over the place. Anyway, that's the clouds in. So I'm going, I haven't bothered cleaning the brush, I'm going straight in back into the raw sienna ultramarine. So I've got all the colours, all the sky colours on the brush now. And then I'll put the distant trees in. So work out your horizon line, I'm going about a third of the way up. And then starting on this left hand side. Oh, too much blue. That'd be all right. I'm just going to work my way 
from left to right. I'm just going to try and just fit really the colour slightly as I go along. Just going from one colour to the next. We'll see now, touch of ultramarine. And then I'm just going to pull this paper flat, it's stretched slightly. And because I wetted it all over evenly, it's, it's stretched evenly, so all I've got to do is pull it tight, refix, and you don't get all that sort of crinkly, horrible crinkly effect. So, working my way along here, I've got some big ones there. Big ones then small, just try and vary the height. I generally try and get some big ones on the edges. And then just big ones on the edges, so it seems to help frame it better. And then with those in. Just do just some very light no just very lightly with your nails and it just looks like um like tree trunks Few of those, and then I'm going to use the rigger. Same colours again. I'm going raw sienna, ultramarine. And we can even just put a few little. more little trunks and twigs and branches and what have you. So basically what you end up with is uh, something, if you can, I hope you can see that, if you just look at the uh, horizon line with the trees, it's just a very simple way of creating that sort of effect. So with those in, I'm going to clean the brush now and I'm going to go Rusiana, Rusiana, just a uh, just a touch, just a touch of burnt umber, not so much. I'm working out that the path's going to be somewhere about there, so I don't want to come any further than that. Lemon yellow, just a tiny bit of green in there. Bit more water. Just below that, we've got this um, sort of heather, heather type, sort of raw sienna -y, light ready sort of colour. And I'll put that in. And you can always a bit of burnt umber as well. And then if you want to darken it up, just go ultramarine and it just sort of. Ultramarine rather than Payne's grey. It's, it's, it just seems to work better for some reason.
this I'm going to put this path in so I can see exactly where I'm working so I'm, I'm not sure, sure how far to come over on either side so I'm just going to go pathy colour, light red, ultramarine right and so it's going to sort of swish from one way to the next so I'm going to start there and I'll just come around there like that and then something like that something like that and then back into our sort of heathery type colours bring that right over to the edge of the path Just trying to vary the height rather than having just one uniform height. Just keep varying the height. Keeps the interest. And then bring, so you bring that right up from there above that tree line. A bit of burnt um, ultramarine to darken it a bit. And I'm going to clean the brush and then back to the foreground. A little raw sienna. A bit of um, Lemon yellow, a bit more grass down there, fill in some of those gaps. Ultramarine, lemon yellow. Just constantly trying to vary it as I work my way down. A few little flicks here and there wouldn't do any harm. Bits of grass and stuff hiding around. And then we've got some on this uh, on this side there's like a big big bush. Big bush here, so Lemon yellow, Payne's grey, trying to get some really dark now, rich, rich coloured green. And then amongst that there's this sort of heathery colour again, light red, burnt on that, rose yellow, and then just popping some of that in there as well. Just a bit of variation. Again, just a few of those, and then switch to the rigger. Plenty of water, same colours, and there, sort of working the way amongst the green foliage. Bit of ultramarine to darken it a bit. A few more. Scuff it up a bit. That'll do for that. Now I'm going to go over the top. Now for this tree. <coughs> so if you have another look at the photograph, you can see how we've got most of it in. So we just need this tree now on the left hand side. So I'm going to use the hike again. I didn't need to clean it actually because I want a dark colour anyway but I want plenty of water plenty of water and I'm getting burnt umber ultramarine nice and dark and then I'm going to start about there and then work my way up there's the first trunk in and if I could Another big one sort of winding its way up. And there's, there's a one or two around there, just uh, right next to one another. Put the main ones in with a hike and then I'll switch to the rigger and put the uh, the finer ones in. And that's another branch coming off that main trunk there. So 
I'm going to switch the rigger now back into that dark mix of burnt umber and ultramarine, plenty of water, and then start putting in some of the, uh, the finer branches with the rigger brush. Try not to overdo it. You still want to be able to see see through the tree into the background and beyond. Don't just sort of block it all in. Very easy to do. That's all I'm going to do for that. And then for the uh, even finer stuff, all I'm going to do is just scuff, clean the brush, scuff it up. Just go into a little bit of that mix and just sort of. It was just sort of like with the very, very edges. Pretty dry brush. That's all I'm going to do for that. I want some of it down there because it looks, uh, looks a bit bare. To make it look as if the tree's planted down. Yeah, a few bits of grass growing. A few more with the uh, the rigger. I might just stick a little figure. I'm just going to stick a little figure walking off into the distance. So I'm just going to go bright red. Bright red. Uh, where shall I put him? Um, something like that. And then switch to the blue. Put his legs in. Stick a little dog down there as well. There's the dog's head, little tail, and his little feet down there, and his little little lead giving down there. Now do, and then uh, yeah, I made a bit of a mess of that dog. Never mind. I'm trying to do like, like footprints where they just walk from, but I made a bit of a bit of a hash of that. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll um if you make a mistake, all you gotta do, take a bit of tissue. If it's dry or whatever, just re-wet it. Re-wet it. And then oh. give it a quick dry. Stick our little dog in there. So there's his head, there's his tail, little body, and there's his legs. Just make his legs a bit longer as well, as a bit short. Also make him a bit wider. Mm. And then just put some little footsteps. 
steps away is just come. Also do a little couple of birds in the sky. And I think I'll call that one finished. All that's left to do now is stick your little signature on it. Down in the bottom corner. And I'll call that one finished. So there's our finished painting. Let's just have another quick look at the photograph. You can see it's not a it's not a million miles away. You can see how the uh, the sky is just a uh, just a very sort of boring blue. So in the uh, painting, I'm just trying to make it a bit more interesting with the uh, trying to add a bit of um, cloud to it, and just started with the raw sienna and the ultramarine, and then the uh, the cloudy bits. We've got a nice little path leading off into the distance. Just a quick sweep with the hike, light red ultramarine and. Uh, just uh, the added figure there with a the man walking his dog. You can see the uh, the distant trees using the same colours as the sky, just helps push them right back onto the horizon line. And then over on the left hand side, we've got our big tree. And again, using the hake, just putting very quickly and simply. Making the smaller branches with the rigger and then back to the hake again just to make these impressions of these little uh, little twigs and branches right at the very end. Well, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.